Hello, and thanks for tuning in to my talk on the CQP Web Plugin Framework, which is at the focus of my current work to make extensibility a major feature of CQP Web. CQP Web is the graphical interface for Corpus Workbench, or CWB. What is Corpus Workbench? It's a very well-known system for indexing and querying large corpora with multiple layers of annotation. It's been under development since the early 1990s, first at the IMS in Stuttgart, later as an open project. CQP Web was originally designed for me personally to use in my own teaching at Lancaster University back in 2008. It replicated the interface of the well-known BNC web system, but could be used for work with any corpus, not just the BNC. But people outside Lancaster were gradually granted access to our server and it, the system became widely used. And when CQP Web was adopted into the Corpus Workbench project, from then on it too was open source, meaning anybody can install it. And lots of people have. So there are many servers out there uh, on the web uh, that can be accessed and used. In principle, since it's open source, anyone can extend or modify CQP Web to support user needs that the core system doesn't cover. In practice, to do that, you not only need fairly strong programming skills, you also need a pretty detailed understanding of CQP Web's data model, program flow, and its internal function libraries. And that's quite a big hurdle. So what is possible in theory is unsurprisingly rarely done in practice. But what I can do as the main developer is make CQP Web extensible. That is to create a framework where others can add extra gizmos to CQP Web without having to know about the entire system architecture. To put it another way, the main CQP Web program can never support the needs of every user, but an extensibility framework can let others support their own needs or those of their colleagues. So when I'm talking about user needs, what are the kinds of user needs that I have at the forefront of my mind? The number one need right now is that users want to insert their own corpora into CQP Web. And uh, people have wanted this since approximately uh, five minutes after CQP Web arrived on the scene. But users also want to be able to make interfaces to corpus construction and annotation tools or pipelines of tools. They want more options for formatting of textual downloads. They want a broader range of analysis tools for concordances and corpora, especially statistical analyses and novel data visualizations. I am trying to meet these needs via extensibility by adding a plugin framework to CQP Web. What's a plugin? It's a self-contained code object which performs a narrowly defined task within a bigger system. There have always been many places in CQP Web where the program performs a modular job, one that doesn't make reference to the rest of the system. This includes data download as text files, corpus installation, annotating textual data, and many more. Any of these modular jobs could be replaced as a unit by another unit that does an equivalent job. And CQP Web now allows people to write plugins to do particular modular jobs and to slot them into the system. Different named types of plugins are defined to address different user needs. Downloader plugins generate a text file download from the results of any query. They connect up to the download option in the concordance action menu. On the download page, CQP Web's default tool is a complex set of options at the bottom of the page. But there have always been shortcuts, buttons at the top for frequently used options. Now, those buttons are generated by plugins. And it is fully configurable what buttons for specific download formats are added or removed at the top there. Behind the scenes, the plugins are managed by the system administrator, who has an interface showing what plugins are available and controlling which users and corpora they are activated for. Annotator and corpus installer plugins support user corpora. An annotator plugin runs on plain text to tag it. A corpus installer manages the whole upload, tag and configure process. 
Here we can see the plugin information for my installer and annotator plugins on the Lancaster server. Unlike downloaders, they need a bit of extra setup data to be configured for the particular setup. And this information allows the actual interface presented to the user to bypass a whole lot of the complexity. The user corpus install page looks like this. Every available installer plugin appears in the top part of the interface in one of those grey boxes. You can see I've got six there. You select an installer to use by clicking on it. Then you select your files from your upload area to use as input. You push the button that says install and that is more or less it. Once the installer finishes its work, the new corpus appears in your user corpus list. When you click on the name of the corpus in the first column there, you enter the standard CQP web interface for your corpus. How do plugins work? CQP Web needs to be able to talk to the plugins, so each type of plugin has certain rules about the information it receives and what it produces. Here, I've laid out the information received by and then produced by the plugin for all three of the types mentioned so far. A corpus installer, for instance, from CQP Web, it receives a list of input files which contain the raw text of the corpus that we want to create. It produces new annotated versions of those files and tells CQP Web where they are. And it also answers queries from CQP Web about the corpus configuration. Each plugin is written as a standard PHP file. Now, PHP is the language that CQP Web is written in. And this file must contain a single PHP class, and that class has got the code for the actual plugin program. Once you've written such a plugin file, looking something like this, you um, have to pick up the file and plop it into the right folder on the computer that runs CQP Web. And that is a folder that is called plugins, which already has many built-in plugins inside it. Put your plugin there and now it's part of CQP Web. A few technical details. Each type of plugin is specified as an object interface. An interface is a definition of the methods that plugins of that type must provide. And methods are how the plugin is accessed. CQP Web loads plugin classes as required and utilizes the interface methods to execute that plugin's capabilities at the appropriate time. Do plugins have to be written in PHP? Right now, yes, they do. But even in the current state of things, it's still possible to write a really small plugin that does not very much except pass off the main work to some external program, such as Python or R or Perl or even a custom program, and then collect the results. This allows the reuse of existing tools of any kind, whether scripts or programs or whatever. Certain CQP web functions are designated as being available for plugin authors. These enable plugins to talk to the rest of the CQP web system. And two of those things that the plugins can talk to are the face tools, the R face and the Pi face, which are alternative ways of accessing R and Python. CQP Web itself uses the R face for some of the maths involved in calculating log ratio confidence intervals. The code on screen illustrates the way in which CQP Web passes a statistical command to R when it's calculating the log ratio. Now, that's what CQP Web does, but plugins can use the R face for whatever they like. The Pyface, which allows commands to be fed into a Python process in the same way, is still work in progress. But the faces allow you to write most of your plugin in either R or Python, whichever your language of choice is. Then the actual plugin PHP class can just request an R face or Pyface, pass in the data and commands, retrieve the results and return them to CQP Web. Either way, writing plugins is much easier than attempting to dig into the CQP Web main code. In summary then, this plugin framework is, I think, a promising example of a paradigm for enhancing extensibility and flexibility of corpus software analysis. This is the future of CQP Web. That's my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.